This is Dave Barker. We're going to talk about international coverage now. Um, as a reporter, as a photographer, whatever, nothing really changes when you're over there. Don't try to change your style at all. Two things you got to do, though. You got to understand not only the local laws, but local traditions. Let me show you an example. Uh, this came from France uh, during the riots. They were it was actually in the suburbs of Clichy sous Bois. Um, but then it erupted all over France, so we quick jumped on a plane and went over there. Uh, and here's uh, one of the stories we covered. As a result of the fires, a lot of the, the ultra-conservative folks started speaking out. The unrest driven mostly by teenage French citizens whose parents, grandparents emigrated to France mostly from African and Arab countries. We took a taxi across Paris, past old Parisian government institutions across the street from the crystal pyramids of the famed Louvre Museum. We entered a famous public gathering square called the Place du Palais Royal, where more than a thousand people came to hear perhaps the most controversial figure in French politics. Jean-Marie Le Pen, an ultra-rightist former presidential candidate, calling for zero immigration. He then spoke about the young rioters. He says right now these people may get three months in jail. Many years ago, people found responsible for setting fires that could result in death was a big crime. Minimum 10 years in prison or death. It should be that way again, he said. Francois Satour was born and raised in Paris and believes Le Pen is a visionary. He understands things long before the others. We tried but found no opposing views in this crowd, even from this young man, a son of African immigrants. I saw the show. But tout ce que moi je peux dire c'est que il faut pas qu'il There are too many people in France, too few jobs. Open immigration is a bad idea, he says. Arabs and uh, blacks mostly come in France to make the, uh, to, to make disorder. That's not good at all. Arabs and blacks mostly come into France to make disorder? Now in America that is racist. Now keep in mind I actually shot all of that stuff. What happened that night is that my photographer uh, I, I got a tip that all, there would be fires that night in Lyon, it was south of France, or south of Paris. So the interpreter and my photographer went down to Lyon. We had this big, big uh, uh, event that was happening with uh, uh, the, the, all those conservative folks and all those openly racist people. It was bizarre what was going on. So I, I rented a camera, found another guy that could speak the language for me, and, and went and did this thing. I, I can kind of shoot video, and I definitely can edit. And, and in the middle of that thing, I went out to the sidewalk to shoot some wide shots. Right, Steve? Photographer over here, you got to shoot wide shots, medium shots, tight shots, right? So I'm going out there getting my wide shots, and all of a sudden, <laughs> this um, three-wheeled car screamed up in front of me and almost hit me. And I was, ah, you know, French, and the guy's mad at me. And I went, well, I, I don't know what you're saying. Amer American reporter. And he goes, oh, American. He says, get back over there. You know, and I went, wait, this is a public space, you know. <clears throat> I'm in Paris, right? Democracy, no. And he goes, get back in the pen. This is, this is not the way we do things here. I could arrest you now. So I, I, I remember getting down on my hands and knees, and I did that. And I said, I am so sorry. I forgot. I forgot, went back in the pen. So you got to know, again, whether that was a law or not, it was definitely custom, uh, a custom there. Reporters don't go on the sidewalks during events that are, that are boiling like that. So I learned a, learned a big lesson there. All right, <clears throat> the next one I want to show you here is from the Middle East. It's the first time I ever really covered war. Um, and uh, a lot of the longtime journalists and war correspondents call it boom boom. And it's true. You can go to the front all the, and get all the boom boom you want. And it's really dangerous. It's really loud. It's really great. It's really exciting. It's really interesting. Uh, but I always like to, you know, once we got the boom boom, I took all my stuff off and the, and the armor. And I said, let's go to the front this time. But let's tell the story because a lot of the Israeli soldiers, the members of the IDF, actually left their homes in their own cars and drove to the front. And so we decided just to do a story on getting to the front like the soldiers. From Jerusalem, we ventured north. Now to get to the front line of today's ugly war, we went through many beautiful pieces of this biblical mosaic. We were on the Israeli side of the Jordan River, where the Golan Heights meet Syria just a couple of miles away. All along this beautiful path carved from so many civilizations, we saw signs of military tension. And a half an hour before we would be instantly catapulted into several potentially deadly situations, 
rose the Sea of Galilee, where the Bible says Jesus walked upon the waters of the world's lowest freshwater lake. Then... Just, uh, Katusha just hit, hit the uh, hillside. Where is it? It just landed? It just landed. It had begun. The day's rain of the powerful Hezbollah Katusha rocket suddenly ignites. One hits just to the right of our car. We jump out and climb a steep, rocky field already enveloped in flames. Now, after that was recorded, Got up. Wow. we just heard two loud bangs. Not sure if it's artillery or Katusha. I usually say to wait 30 or 60 seconds. That's about how long it's been for it to land. Katushas go at two, two times the speed of sound. Nothing landed, we saw no smoke, so we headed back to the car. We needed food. Outside a small cafe in Rosh Pina, Katushas and tragedy strike simultaneously. What the hell was that? We first thought a rocket had landed, but then we saw the car of a young soldier on his way to the front, crushed. We were here moments after it happened, the man pinned inside, not breathing. I'm told brain damage would begin in four minutes. HD News photographer Bob Turr has emergency medical training and ran to the car while I picked up the camera. I was able to open his airway. He was not breathing at the time. I put an S tube in. After stabilizing the soldier, all the crews began amassing in. Ambulance, police, military, and fire. But then... <laughs> air raid sirens screamed. Katusha's spotted heading towards us. With the young soldier, though still inside the car, no one moved to shelter. IDF medic Neil Eisenstadt watched, not surprised to see an American news photographer and local emergency responders working together. Did he save his life? Absolutely. From a sea of biblical history to a sea of Katusha's to a sea of rescue, it was a day none of us will ever forget. In high definition, Dave Parker, Voom, HD News at the Lebanese border. So as exciting as that day was, we almost got killed. Almost had our heads taken off that day. Um, there was a, we don't, it didn't happen on camera, uh, but our, our, our guide was actually a member of the IDF who also ran a tourist company. We hired him. There was a break in the fence at the Lebanese border. Really beautiful, that, that area. But underneath it, it, it doesn't belie the danger of the area. There's caves under there and there's gorillas and there's tanks. But I said, you know, there's a break. And I talked to my photographer. Our, our guide had gone off to smoke. I said, let's run up there and just do a quick stand-up and we'll run back. So we ran over there, did this stand-up, and we start walking back. We were kind of patting ourselves on the back. Wow, we just reported from Lebanon, you know. And all of a sudden, uh, from one of these big three-story high thing where they're looking at the border, the Israeli officers, all of a sudden they were screaming, get them out of there. And they're pointing at us. And so we start running. And then I hear this rat-a-tat-a, rat a tat I look behind me. Well, I was told that Hezbollah had been in that area like 15 days earlier, but had been beaten back, but there was a, still a cluster of them there. These were the people that were, you know, taking reporters and, and cutting off their heads, and they were being killed right behind us. So in other words, know the customs, know the laws. You know, again, you don't have to change your style, but just, you, you know, for your own safety, for God's sakes, know what you're going into.